Hey Glams, welcome to Glamour and Brains. I'm your host, Aja Yasir. This show features all things beauty, fashion, and business. I'm going to be bringing you all things glamour. And of course, with glamour, you have to have brains. Are you ready to make as much money as you want from the comforts of your home or from anywhere in the world? Well, join the Simple Beauty Naturals family by starting your own Simple Beauty Naturals franchise. Make incredible unlimited income with natural vegetarian skincare products that won't kill you. Simple Beauty Naturals is the gold standard skincare and cosmetic system and our franchisees are gold standard certified beauty consultants. Go to www.simplebeautynaturals.com to apply to be one of our franchisees. You deserve to live the life you want. And now today's episode of Glamour and Brains. Hey Glams, what do Janet Jackson Beyonce, Stevie Wonder, John Sally, and I tell you, the list can go on and on and on. What do they all have in common? It is Karen Calabrese. She is a restaurant owner in Chicago. Her restaurants are vegan. She has a vegan restaurant and a raw restaurant, and they are absolutely fabulous. Her raw restaurant is the longest standing raw vegan restaurant in the United States. And this interview I did with her is so inspirational. She was a single mother, homeless at one point, and now she is this fabulous, well-known restaurant owner, well-known all over the world. So you're going to hear how she went from her beginning stages up into where she is right now. And I'm telling you, hold on to your seats because you are getting ready to be inspired. So here's my interview with the fabulous Karen Calabrese. Welcome to the show, Karen. Yeah, how are you? I am absolutely great. How are you? I'm excited to be doing this. This is my most favorite thing in the world is to turn people on to my lifestyle. I hear that. And speaking of lifestyle, let us know a little bit about your restaurants. They're fabulous, but let the world <laughs> who the world that already that doesn't already know, let them know about your <laughs> restaurants. Well, here's the deal. I've been doing what I've been doing for 47 years. I've been a, a raw foodist for about 35. And it's all the rage now. I'm very excited that I'm not the crazy lady in Chicago, the only person doing it anymore. It's all over the place. But I do have the longest standing raw food restaurant in the country here in Chicago. And um, it's really taken off. I can remember 35 years ago, my husband saying when I started with the wheatgrass, you're not going to get anybody to eat that bad word but you. Uh, he said a bad word. And and I said no and now it's everybody's doing it. it's a rage you can go into any restaurant you can go into and people know what you're talking about so I, I have the raw food restaurant but I also have a cooked plant-based restaurant too so I'm all about giving up the animals except to play with <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned your restaurants when you first started 35 years ago but I want to talk about the fact that you are in Chicago, and Chicago is the home of very rich foods like deep dish pizza and Italian beef. It's the meat capital of the world. Come (laughs) on, it is to be here. So when I first opened up, people used to walk by my restaurant and stick their fingers down their throat. You know, like, oh, is she crazy? You know, no, nobody was interested in what I had. So a big part of my whole process has been in educating. And I do do free information seminars twice a month. I've done them for years. We actually stream them now so you can pick me up on your computer if you can't make it into the uh, restaurant or to the school to hear me speak. And it's really all about education because, you see, as human beings, we intuitively know what's right. It's just that we've forgotten. And so what I do is I help people to reawaken what they already know, what they're inherently born knowing how to take care of themselves. And once you kind of get the point across, no, you don't go from A to Z overnight, but you plant the seed and then you work toward the process. And that's what I'm all about, planting seeds and help people working through their process of transformation. Uh, I am 68 years old. 
and people think that I'm, I don't know what they think, but nobody thinks I'm 68 years old. I posted a picture of myself in a bikini this year for my birthday. And, uh, you know, just to show that, uh, not to show off, but to show that there's another way. You know, we have the Kardashians in our lifetime, and everybody's getting lunchtime treatments and sucking it out and getting needled and Botoxed. And I have no judgment on anyone choosing to make that. We all do what we feel is necessary to make ourselves feel good. But I just want to be a representative of young women just to know that there's another outcome there there's another outcome that you can have if you make different choices in your life and that's really what I'm all about so I posted a bikini picture a 68 year old bikini babe is what I call myself and I'm gonna do it every year till I'm 85 because my skin isn't wrinkled my face isn't wrinkled and it's not because I'm a woman of color because our women were aging too and getting diabetes and hypertension and all the other illnesses I haven't been sick in 45 years I don't know what illness is I don't wear glasses uh, I work 16 hours a day six days a week and it's all because of the choices that I make on a consistent basis for my life. Now you mentioned education and how you educate your market. How much education did you have to give to the market when you first started out? Well, to be honest with you, it didn't matter how much I educated. Nobody even listened until I was on Oprah the first time. <laughs> After I was on Oprah, the people started to pay attention a little bit. And then I started to get more and more press. So much so much has to do with culturally, pop culture, what's going on in the moment, too. So I would say Oprah was my first inroad to people kind of paying attention that weren't sick. Now, I had a lot of sick people coming to me to get changes. But just your average person, it took a while. Uh, you are very busy. You have your restaurants. You have, I know you have a line of um, skincare. Don't you have skincare products? Uh, skincare. I have vitamins, herbs. I have foods. I have foods to go. We actually have our foods in some uh, other commercial stores that are carrying our foods and desserts and things. Yeah, I'm, I'm working 16 hours a day to keep it all going, but, you know, it's a joy, and I get rewarded every moment of my life because I'm doing what I love to do so it doesn't feel like work. Now, there are a lot of entrepreneurs who are listening to the show right now, and they're like, how in the world does she do this? And I know a lot of it has to do with what you eat and your lifestyle, but what does a typical day in the life of Karen Calabrese look like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm up every morning at 4.30. And uh, when people say, what do you have for breakfast, Karen? I pray and meditate every day of my life. So prayer and meditation is the first part of my day. I read from about seven prayer books. I meditate for about 40 minutes. Um, I do the Tibetan rites. I have a little gym in my home, so I probably do about an hour, hour and a half workout at home. I uh, do yoga every day. And then I uh, do some work from home, and then I come, uh, I, or generally I go to one of the restaurants by about 6, 37 in the morning to check my kitchens. Um, then I may go back home and work again, and then come back probably about 9 o'clock. Um, and then I see, you know, I see clients, I see people, I work my programs, I make up new food. It just depends on what the day is calling for. Uh, and I'm usually here working probably until about oh, eight, nine o'clock. Oh, my dog is with me too every day. I take my dog to work with me. Uh, oh, I do a trampoline class during the week. I do a ballet class. I just finished a boot camp for girls. Um, the summer ballet, a three-hour ballet workshop that I was doing every day, Monday through Friday, with 18-year-olds and under. So that kind of switched up the schedule a little bit. I don't know. I'm always. I'm about to run a race in October. I'm going to do the Rose Hill Cemetery race. So I'm always looking for new ways to challenge myself too. I think it's just as important as eating right is keeping yourself living on the edge and challenging yourself and not getting too comfortable where you become when you fall asleep. How do you keep it all together doing all of this and running the races and doing the classes? How do you maintain focus on the restaurants? Well, I detox a minimum of four hours, uh, four times a year. And so by keeping my body clean, you know, the human body is capable of so much more than what we realize and recognize. I mean, it's meant to last several hundred years. So this getting old and middle-aged at, you know, 50, 60, 70 is a travesty. Uh, that's number one. Our brain, we have so much more brain power, but unfortunately it's dumbed down by the chemicalization of our world. We're putting in so many chemicals consistently in our bodies that our brains, our bodies, everything gets dumbed down and, and we lose our focus and our 
my thought and our reality. So by being very conscientious about what I put in my body, it helps me. I mean, we're capable of so much. I'm not special. you got to understand that there's nothing special about me except the choices that I make consistently. And I didn't come to these choices overnight. I mean, I've been doing this for 47 years. I've been doing a backwards, forward dance all these years. So you don't just get on the train and move forward. You spend time going backwards too, but that's how you actually learn. It's just that I've done it longer than most people. So I don't think there's anything special about me. I think anybody could do what I'm doing if they live the life that I do. Do you ever slip up? Uh, a slip up for me is to eat a little bite of something cooked that I'm testing for my uh, cook restaurant. Uh, but I never slip up with meat, fish, chicken, or dairy. Uh, uh, a slip up for me is eating four or five mangoes instead of one. A slip up for me, but you know, it hasn't always been that way. I, I had slip ups along the way in the beginning. I didn't go from A to Z overnight. But where I am now, a slip up for me is eating after sundown because I don't like to do that either. Uh, a slip up for me is uh, eating too much fruit because I don't need all the sugar at my age. The glycosins age you. Uh, so, you know, but as you transition, the slip ups change. And what I, I teach people is you need your bridges along the way. And you don't compare yourself to someone else. You just keep moving forward in your own lane. And you kiss yourself with every little mistake you make. Mm -hmm, part of my process. And you keep moving forward. Yeah, that's true. I think a lot of us are very hard on ourselves. And it doesn't do any good. If you're guilty of something, then you got to be punished. And then you go back for even further. But if you just go, mm -hmm, part of my process, then you can keep moving forward with ease. Right. Your restaurants have been crazy successful. I mean, you've attracted all types of celebrities. I know Beyonce was in there. Stevie oh, Wonder. Yeah, it's crazy. What what other names did you have? Angela Bassett, Boy George, um, John Cusack. Uh, well, I don't have them all in front. Uh, I don't have them all in front of me right now. But I mean, even Ellen DeGeneres, when she's been in town, she's ordered from me. Even if they. You know, uh, Janet Jackson uh, had her pilot come in and get food for me. So uh, the name of Jermaine Dupri eats in every time he's in town. John Sally, um, Dr. Reverend Beckwith. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of popular, which is nice. But that's because I have delicious food. <laughs> Outside of the delicious food, to what do you attribute your success? Uh, consistency and focus and uh, never giving up. Uh, I, I, you have to stay very consistent with what you're doing. You have to stay very focused. And you have to believe in what you're doing. I, I, I couldn't sell gummy bears. You know, I couldn't sell steak. I could only sell and work with something I truly believe in. So I think if you have a passion for something, there's your first uh, signal as to the direction you're supposed to be going in. Because if you have a passion, you can keep it going. Have you ever felt like giving up? No, I no, I don't. I, I've got that weird chip that, you know, I've been homeless and without food for my children. Uh, I just recently closed one of my restaurants, the, the big one that I opened, Karen's on Green. I'm pretty much in debt with that. But it just means that I was supposed to be doing that for that moment, and now this is another moment. So I never feel like I'm... Everything is a step in your life. Everything is part of who you are, who you to become, and the decisions you make. So everything that comes my way is just a part of who I am and where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to teach and touch others' lives and my own. We mentioned, well, you just mentioned that you were homeless at one point when you were a single mother. And yes. before we started the show, we were actually talking about, I first, I was first introduced to your restaurant when you had the smaller restaurant on Armitage. On Lincoln. On Up Lincoln, on. on Lincoln, I'm sorry. How did you get from that point, from <laughs> being a single mother, being homeless, and then having the smaller restaurant on Lincoln to the crazy success that you've had now? Well, you know, it, first, once again, it started with me, with uh, learning how to clean out my body and take care of me. I mean, I worked three jobs. Um, my first wheatgrass juicer, I bought secondhand from someplace else. I used to grow it hydroponically. I, I'd say by learning to take care of me first, it kind of boomeranged into everything else and by staying steady. So, you know, I cleansed and detox my body which cleared my brain you know I wasn't smoking pot or drinking alcohol or eating fried chicken or whatever it was to dull my 
brain and my body. I was putting in, in the highest frequency of things within my system. And the thing is, it's all here for all of us. You know, people say to me, well, how do you come up with all these recipes? Or how do you do this? It's out there vibrationally for everybody. It's just putting yourself in a position to download it. You know, <laughs> just keeping your frequencies open and clear. We're all radio channels, but having the frequency open and clear to download it is what's important. So I would say, first and foremost, it's learning how to take care of yourself, and then it's a domino effect. Everything else will follow. There are some entrepreneurs out there who are like, look, I need to get it together in order to really make my business thrive. What are, what are some tidbits that you can give us when it comes to food and lifestyle to really stay focused on our goals in business? Okay, well, first of all, uh, everybody needs to give up cow secretions. I mean, it's, it's the single worst dulling, dumbing thing to human beings is doing anything that came from a cow. If it's milk, if it's butter, if it's cheese, if it's ice cream, if it's yogurt, if it's whatever it is, if it came from a cow, it's intended for a baby calf. It wasn't intended for human beings. So right there, you're creating imbalance. Cause and effect is what uh, creates and sustains the world. So if you're constantly putting in a fuel that wasn't intended to go into your body, and my Myself, as an African-American woman, I have even less tolerance than some other cultures have for it. We have none in our culture whatsoever. Uh, the cow is an indigenous on an anthropological level uh, from our part of the world, and we have no tolerance. So giving up the cow secretions, you start to clear your mind and your brain almost immediately. Um, then, of course, I would find a detoxification program, i.e., I think mine is one of the best out there because I've been doing it for the longest, and I would start to clean out my body because if you just put in a lot of good foods on top of a lot of dirt, it's kind of like a trash compactor, and it just pushes it down, and ultimately those uh, rotten foods start to come through and call to be you know, fed again. So I think a good detoxification program is very important. Um, I think... Um, I think cleaning out your cupboards at home is so important. What you come home to, how you take care of your life in general. If you are organized, you're going to be able to move forward. If you can't find anything around you, if you don't know what you're, where to put the next foot and step in front of the next, you know, you're going to create daily problems for yourself. So I think cleaning out your cupboards at home, organizing your life, getting rid of all the clutter, anything that you can't use, clean out your refrigerator, clean out your cupboards, clean out your closets and then move forward with an entirely new paradigm to start your life or move forward in it. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, very thoroughly. Thank you very much. What are some roadblocks you faced as you continue to expand your business? I know we, we just talked about your smaller business. And yeah, well, Lincoln. the big roadblocks that I have, and I, I'm, you notice I didn't even hesitate to start this answer, it's the workforce out there today. It's finding the right people to work with you and for you. It is not easy in this day and age. It, it's, it's a constant source of um, disappointment. Uh, it's a constant source of money because you train people and then they don't show up or you reprimand people for what they're not doing and you do you know I have an employee right now accusing me of racial discrimination oh my goodness she's black I'm black and I'm being accused of racial discrimination and I'm gonna have to get an attorney to defend myself she won't have to I mean I say my biggest roadblock are the workforce and it's finding good people who really are looking for a job, who share your passion also. That's important to find sometimes people that share your passion. And honesty and integrity. It, it just isn't at the forefront of our world today. Why? Why do you think that is? I think there's so many distractions now. I think that the home is not what it used to be with the parents teaching and raising their kids. I think TV and, and all this social media stuff is such a big part of influencing the way young people think. I think things have come very easily to people or not where they don't realize the work involved um, to do what you need to do in life. Every, there's a lot of um, expectations, unrealistic expectations. Uh, and I, I just think, and I, I probably sound like those old people that talked about the new generation, but I mean, it's a different generation of people going out. I mean, I have people that show up for job interviews and wife beaters and all their oh tattoos. You know, I have people showing up who don't know what the, uh, what the capital of uh, Illinois is. You know what I mean? 
don't, it's just, I think it's our educational system. I think it's so much of just the distractions in our world today. And then I will take it once again back to the food. If you're getting no nutrients to your brain and your body, you're not going to learn how to think and act. How do you navigate that? Pray and meditation every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hence long hours of prayer and meditation and uh, that has a lot and, and I shouldn't sound so negative I mean I have some very good people working with me and I I have some very good people that have been with me for a while but it took a lot of weeding to get to them and I'm still weeding you know we had a girl that we hired two weeks ago she's been in training for two weeks to run my desk and uh, today was her first no three weeks ago today was her first day on her own no phone call no nothing I have some phenomenal, Wanda, Gabby, Nancy, I have three of the best women, on, at three really incredible women that work with me that help me keep this whole thing moving. But it's all the, all the other things that you need in the in-between, I'll tell you. And I have some great people in my juice bar, and I have some great people at my other restaurant, but it's all the, you know, all the disappointments that you face in between. And I would say, your entrepreneurs out there, that's your biggest challenge is the workforce today, what's available. The vegan community, and I'm not a raw foodist, but the vegan mm -hmm. community seems to be very, I don't know, judgmental to a certain extent. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm not a part of the community. That's why I stand, <laughs> that's why I stand alone. Uh, and, and what people don't understand is you don't get anybody on your team by judging. I mean, my husband smokes cigarettes, and people look at me and go, oh, my God, you're the queen of green, and your husband smokes cigarettes? That's right. He has a lot of wonderful qualities, and I dated a lot of jerks that didn't smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, So you have to find in people what works for you, or you shouldn't be around them. And you certainly can't judge other people. I don't judge anybody's choices. I am... I'm truly not a vegan, to be honest with you, because I wear leather shoes, you know, and the true vegans don't wear leather, they don't eat honey, and I'm in my journey, so, you know, my answer is, I won't judge you, don't judge me. But I'm pretty sure you get a lot of judgment because of the fact that you wear leather. Oh, not only that, the car I drive, the way I dress, I shave under my arms, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not your typical New Ager type person. And I get a lot of judgment, which is why, you know, I kind of sit in my own little place here and wait for people to come to me because the raw food community, well, first of all, a lot of them are very young. And, you know, a lot of times when you start something new, you're all, you know, you're, you're a little overzealous with it. And then as time comes, you kind of mellow out a little bit, you know. So I think a lot of it is just the young people. And I think a lot of it is the people who don't have any other identity in their lives except the label that they're a raw foodist. You know, I do many. I play the piano. I take dance lessons. I talk politics. Uh, I have a boat. I, I go to the park. I mean, I do a lot of things other than raw food. Because you seem to enjoy the finer things in life. And uh, like you said, people come against you because of the car you drive, but you are not the Birkenstocks, <laughs> hippie kind I, of person that a lot of people think vegan should be. I have some rhinestone Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, what do you say to these people who are so judgmental towards you? You know, what I generally say to them is, you know, actually, you, you probably don't know about it, but there was a whole campaign against me from the Vegetarian Society for a while, about a few years back. And, yeah, they, they were saying because I had honey in some of my products, which it's listed. If you don't want the honey, then buy what's next to it without honey. And they were trying to get people to come in and have some food and say, oh, well, they didn't know it was honey, and they were going to do a class action suit against me and blah, 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 blah. And one of, the, one of their group alerted me and sent me the email or the Facebook stuff that they were doing. And so I sent them an answer saying that, you know, it's never my uh, intention to uh, make anyone feel uncomfortable or to... Uh, but if there's anything that I do that makes them uncomfortable, please just avoid my store, you know. And if that doesn't work for you, then make sure that you read all the labels because the, the, the government requires me to label. I can't sneak something into the food without you knowing about it. And uh, so then they came back and said, oh, she's like your little old grandmother, you know, sneaking food in you. And so I wrote one last letter and I said, you know what, guys, I said, in my, in my world, being a vegan means being kind to all animals, humans too. So it's it's a it's a matter of where you put your where you put your heart.
because it doesn't matter if you eat steak or if you wear leather or what you're doing if your heart is in the right place God put you here for a reason and you just have to go through your own journey and your own travels and it's not up to any of us to choose so you know but then but I have to add that the whole vegan vegetarian community in Chicago came to my rescue and they started writing letters you know saying what I had done for them and how their lives and so you know they were kind of put on the back burner but it was alarming initially to find out that I had a whole little group of uh, mean girls you know <laughs> after me <laughs> that's pretty insane that's pretty insane how can people find out more about you and visit your restaurants well I have um uh, I have a website, a brand new website at that. It's called KarenRaw.com. It's K-A-R-Y-N-R-A-W.com. Uh, so you can go to my website, and everything is listed there. You can follow me on social media. I love Instagram, and I've gotten into this, pen, what is it called, Periscope now. I love Periscope, and I love Instagram, and we have Facebook, and we have, um, oh, I have a bunch of YouTubes up. If you want to uh, learn how to make a lot of the food, I have free YouTubes up. I have two books out you can get on Amazon.com or you can come into the store and purchase them or the other restaurant. Uh, I, I do free information seminars twice a month and we stream one day a month and the other one is uh, just regular but you can come in or you can pull me up on your computer and hear me speak and I, I highly recommend that because even if you know what I'm saying you need to hear it again. They don't just put one commercial on TV and expect you to get it. You know so I, I speak regularly for free I also speak for fees if anybody wants to have me out to their church or whatever to speak I speak I just got back from um, Sedona where I, I received a lifetime achievement award and I spoke out there I've spoken in London um, Lithuania all over the world so I go out and speak also but if you want it for free you can come to me uh, I just love what I do and in any way that I can help in your transformation help you in your journey that's what I've been put here for and that's what I love doing yes please everybody go check her out and that YouTube channel that you have oh my goodness I saw that you put your almond pate recipe yeah. up there <laughs> They're for free, guys. But I need subscribers. So will you please tell your people to subscribe? Don't just go get the, because I need the subscribers. Uh, the, the Internet wants subscribers now. So I need subscribers. And you know what else I do? I've been putting up interviews of the different clients that have done my detox class. Um, we have a lady that was about to have a colostomy bag put on. She didn't have to have it. We've had people with crippling arthritis, with crippling headaches. And we put those YouTubes up, too, so you can hear other people's experiences and see see and mo be motivated to know that you can make a difference and a change in your own life. All you have to do is make different choices. Well, on that note, thank you so very much for joining Glamour and Brains, Karen. Oh, let me say one last thing, please. I okay. just like to remind people that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? Thanks, guys. Are you in network marketing and having a hard time earning mid six figures? Well, check out my book, Secrets of a Six Figure Earning Network Marketing Diva, and read how a homeless single mother went from zero to making mid six figures working from home. Hey guys, I'm giving it away for free for a very, very, very limited time to everyone who joins the Glamour and Brains mailing list by going to www.glamourandbrains.net. Go over there and grab your free copy of Secrets of a Six-Figure Earning Network Marketing Diva and start earning today. Thank you to all our glams for listening. Please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Also, go to GlamourAndBrains.net and join our mailing list to get lots of freebies and leave me comments. Also, visit www.SimpleBeautyNaturals.com for all your vegan cosmetics and natural skincare needs.